I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. I sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 268, where I'm going to show you how to populate 2D columns into a multi-dimensional matrix. What do I mean by this? I have here a set of data. It has some of my favorite places in the world. Oak City. Ugh, I did say favorite places in the world. I take that back. Delta is not one of them. <clears throat> I guess I just put it there out of habit. But know, Oaks, know that Oak City, uh, Henry, Full Creek, Nauvoo, those are some of my favorite places in the world. And with that, I have some uh, months associated with them. And then let's call these headers here. Let's call these hours. 120 hours, 144 hours, and 168 hours. And then I have values associated with each one of them. What I would like to do is I would like to create this matrix down here that is multi-dimensional that has a list of my favorite places excluding Delta. And with it, it has these hours. And then I want to populate the values that are found in the appropriate column with the appropriate hours item here within this matrix. So how do I do this in Quantrix Modeler? You may be tempted to say, well, you could probably do a data data link import from data link and then create a multi-dimensional matrix. I don't know if I can quite do that because of the way that uh, this data is uh, just uh, placed here with these items being uh, uh, being uh, columns. So I have to think of it in a different way other than by data link. So what I do here to solve this problem is I would create a new matrix. And with that new matrix, I'm simply going to bring over the category B from the transaction data. I'm going to probably get rid of category uh, D there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring hours over at the top here, or to the side rather. And I want to do a formula that says this, that says this matrix is equal to value at. What is my list? It is a list of uh, my transactional data metrics. And uh, value at is good in the fact that it, you can put in a list and then you can tell the index of the number that you want to return. And the number that I want to return is match. And I want to match my hours here. And I want to uh, match it in this array over here of uh, transactional data matrix the metrics and I want it to be an exact match and what that match has done is that is the second argument of my value list which is going to return an index of where it finds hours and what is going to happen is I am simply because my category B is linked here I'm simply going out and uh, saying if it's in position one or if if I find a match in the third uh, the third place of my array here, then that means it's associated with 120. So go ahead and populate it. If it's the fourth, it's associated with 144, and the fifth is 168. So if I hit enter here, indeed that is what is happening. 176 goes here, 110 goes here, and 112 goes here. So I've been able to pivot this information. And then so down here in this matrix now, what I'm going to do in order to populate it by place and hours, going across by month is I am going to simply go equals this and hit sum summary of this matrix over here. Uh, sorry, it's not sum summary. I'm going to take the sum of this matrix over here. I'm simply going to do hours and then I'm going to say using uh, transactional data month as month here in this matrix and then also I'm going to be using uh, place as place and the reason why I'm able to do that uh, let me get rid of the hours here <clears throat> and I guess just kind of look at the whole matrix in general and the reason I'm able to do that is or with the using as is because my category B is linked here so again if I were to look at uh, month 11 let's go ahead and filter on that selection and I were to say, well, month 11, I should expect to see uh, for Oak City, 
I should expect to see 176, 110, and 122. And indeed, that is what I see. For 120, I would expect to see, uh, or for Nauvoo, rather, I would expect to see in period 11, 116, 171, and 140. So again, that is what I'm seeing here is the same as what I'm seeing down here. So that's how I pivot my data from, say, a two a two dimensional matrix into a multi dimensional matrix within Quantrix, especially when my two dimensional data that I want to be multi dimensional is really all just combined in not as a cross tab, but really just as columns within a table. And if you need help understanding this value at function, again, I'd encourage you to spend just a little bit of time in the dependency inspector. Go ahead and just hovering around and and seeing what that is doing and how that evaluates. It's really powerful. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. I want you to know that I absolutely love Quantrix, and I'm passionate about making you a Quantrix master. And I hope that you will feel free to reach out to me at quantrixauthority at gmail.com with any question that you have about Quantrix. It's a free service that I'm providing to the world. So please ask me any question you have about Quantrix. I'd like to have a challenge, and I'll try to solve it for you and feature you on the podcast here. So... Reach out to me and please join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez. Today's podcast is brought to you by QuantrixAuthority.com. I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master.